Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here at Bish's RV with a 23 uh, RK Vibe. Had, had to think for a minute, the brain went on pause. I've done a lot of videos rapid fire out here in Iowa. Uh, you know, first and foremost, I would like to dedicate today's video to regular viewer Brigand231, that is their YouTube handle. They said, Josh, why don't you ever give me a shout out? And the short answer was because, well, you never asked, so there you go. Um, I would also like to dedicate this video to Mr. Ryan Elliott. He is one of the reps at the Forest River Vibe Company. He was there at Vibe Start, um, and uh, he's been telling me since their inception, you need to get these on your channel, and I finally have the opportunity to do that. So what are we looking at here? Um, this is what I'm going to call a significant like generation two vibe. The generation one vibes literally went up in smoke when their original factory literally went up in smoke. But they took that opportunity to like literally almost rise from the ashes like a phoenix. And they reinvented themselves and they are so much better than they ever used to be. I am really glad that I get a chance to start covering them now because this is like a really good exciting generation for them. Um, to kind of help shape understanding and expectations a little bit, it's not obvious, but Vibe actually shares some management and some things with like the Salem Wildwood group. Um, so you will see this is like a cousin to maybe a Heritage Glen or Hemisphere, but it still maintains a lot of its own DNA. First of all, cosmetically, good gravy this thing has. Just a, a really kind of destination beach house light easy breezy look and feel i love the decor inside of here um this is a very traditional floor plan so i thought this would make a very easy lead in also you usually see this floor plan only in laminated rv or no, i'm sorry only in stick and tin rvs it's hard to find this laminated so if you like this layout but you don't want tin skin bam they got it um uh, alpha wolf makes something kind of similar um, extended season camping package with a heated belly. Uh, this has an extended dry camping package with a solar panel on top that we're going to talk about a little bit more as we go, and a whole bunch of other things. So this is my first vibe on the channel. Let me know what you think, and let me know if you think I need to spend some time catching a few more of these, because I only got so much time to go around, and I want to direct it where basically you want to see stuff. So as I was going through this, uh, making this video, I, I realized that I, this is probably going to develop a theme showing you what they did, where they did certain things nicely, and then where I think they could have done things better. And again, this is my first new vibe ever on this channel. I would love some feedback from you guys. So first impressions, what do you think of the decor? Um, you know, the, the camera is actually reading it as more yellow than it really is. I guess the camera is having a hard time processing it. So let me get you up here a little bit more closely and let me see if the camera will adjust. There you go. That's a little bit better uh, approximation. It's like a, a, a very light sand-ish kind of color. I, I suck at describing colors. I'm so sorry. But um, maybe check one of these out in person. Now, the wood tones have kind of a farmhouse sort of feel, but uh, with... Uh, not not like white farmhouse. I, I don't know. I, again, I'm sucking at describing these colors. I don't know. And I, man, when I walked in, I went, holy cow, is somebody offering a fabric decor? Because you look at this in person, visually, it looks super fabric and you touch it and it is still one of those uh, leatherette kind of things. Although that seating right there is fabric based, which is cool. Um, so that, you know, if the sun is blazing through that window, turning it into a magnifying glass and, uh, cooking you like an ant under the magnifying glass, it won't burn your bottom when you sit down wearing your short shorts like Uncle Gary. <laughs> Big, man, the window coverage in this. That is the one thing with this floor plan I always pick up on. It is a one super slide floor plan, but with the gigantic windows in the slide and... The kitchen window plus huge panoramic viewing window over on the door side. It feels enormous in here. And I, I actually, what do you think about the way they did the window treatments? I kind of like this when I'm not hitting my head on the slide ceiling as I stand straight up like a dingbat. Um, they kind of just went with some sort of like modern piping here. And just like a little window blocker on the side. But they didn't really hide the roller shade. I'm kind of digging it. It's sort of working for me, but I'm weird like that. Oh, here's one of the other things. Most laminated trees, a lot of laminated trees like this are six and a half foot sidewalls, and then they have a vaulted ceiling. This one is six, nine tall. Um, it's interesting because 
you know, Salem and Wildwood stick and tin make this floor plan called a 27RK. Now, Salem and Wildwood have a laminated division called uh, Hemisphere and Heritage Glen, respectively. Weirdly, this is, it's almost like this has more in common with the stick and tin Wildwoods than the laminated Wildwoods. It's, it's, it's just kind of, it's kind of funky how that uh, all came to pass. Coleman centralized air here with um, every single air duct can close and turn individually. Of course, you have the cold air duct. Now, you see how these vents are open? I see this on owner's forums sometimes. People say, I can't, I can hardly keep my bedroom and my bathroom cooled off. Close your vents, guys. Um, when you leave these open, about 70% of your air drops right here. So you're really not centralizing your AC very much. When you do that, then it starts running air through the central ducting. Maybe that might help a couple of you folks out there. Um... The, uh, the dinette over here, um, this is one of those areas I think they could have done better in a couple ways. So it's kind of pr personal preferential, but um, the pedestal style legs, I just, I would personally like something else, but I get that they're, that might work into the price point here. But what I'm about to show you is it's, it's uncomfortable to display on camera, but I like to, basically my job with Bish's RV is as much to be an educator as it is a consumer advocate. I don't say stuff like this often, but that sucks. That just, that needs to get bulked up. Because if a, a dude of decent size like me sits on that and leans back, you're gonna, you're gonna bust your dinette. I, and then, you know, I, I, I hate to say stuff like that, but the fact is it's true. And I, I feel like it really kind of sullies the rest of the RV that I think has some really awesome redeeming qualities. Like this kitchen. Oh my gosh. I love this kitchen. I'm a huge fan of rear kitchens. Um, the uh, that, that gigantic countertop that we're looking at right there. Just a huge amounts of presses. And look at the position of the sink. The sink you'll see is facing the entertainment, which is really cool because a lot of times the, the campsite cook gets left out. And since the sink is not buried under a cabinet, you don't feel like you're doing this the entire time you're trying to do dishes. And this is hard to like frame up when you're as tall as I am. So like a lot of rear kitchens have a sink over here, but a lot of them have really aggressive cabinetry. So a lot of them, if you're doing dishes, you're, you're kind of like this, or you're like really hunched over. And I mean, it just, it starts wearing on you. <laughs> Not as bad as like, you ever see the people in the infomercials? It's like, oh no, are you trying to do dishes? And they're just standing here and they're like, and you know i was trying to put my finger on it and i think i finally did i'm like I, this decor it's obviously it's new but it feels familiar um i'm in so many different like rv facebook groups and one of the things that i see is somebody will buy an older rv and renovate it and touch it up i like that overhead cabinet space dang that's nice wait but why is that wasted that's stupid. Open this up. Do something with that. That could be done better. Anyway, sorry. I'm in these groups where people um, renovate stuff. And this looks like an RV interior that like somebody bought and painted. That's kind of what it's reminding me of. Um, now, ultralight walls, inch and a half sidewalls, means you don't see uh, outlets in the sidewalls. They are under the overhead cabinets. There's one on the left side of the left light and one on the right side of the right light uh, way down there. Um, 12 volt DC compressor fridge over here. Uh, the, uh, I believe the factory solar package, I think is standard now. I could be mistaken on that. Again, vibe is a little bit newer with me. Um, apologies that I don't have like all of that just down from rote memory effectively. Uh, doing my best to kind of, you know, pick this stuff up on, uh, as I go on the fly. Um, now the, uh, dish drying rack for this, the big farm sink makes for a perfect little doorstop when the RV is not level. And I would say, wowie zowie, that's a great spot for a wastebasket. If it weren't for the fact that they already took care of that for us. Now, the fact that there's a full wastebasket and drawers right there is a really significant feature to note. Because there are a growing number of rear kitchen models that will also stuff uh, an outside kitchen under this area and lose all of that storage or most of it. Um, now, the cool thing is this camper does have a rear kitchen. 
because under the countertop right there is no man's land. It's wasted space that you can't get to. So they used it outside to make sure it didn't end up wasted. Uh, I realized the refrigerator was open, so we couldn't see the pantry. And as long as we're working our way down that guy right there, take a look at these totes. Remember I said to share some Salem Wildwood DNA? You know those Versa Lounge totes that I like so much in my videos? That's exactly what we're looking at here. Um, they are food safe, by the way, which is going to be a cool thing since they kind of mingle with the uh, kitchen a bit. And once again, gigantic viewing windows. And it is a breeze window on both slide sides. I think that's really important since the big windows don't necessarily open for airflow. Now, um, mostly going to be a couple's model. But what if you're going to have some guests? The dinette could fold down, but obviously so can that trifold sleeper sofa right there. And this is another thing. Uh, like, I, I was really critical of the dinette back. I, I do still think that should be reinforced. There, you know, the, that, that being said, it could be done at least. They're using thicker, nicer cushions on this. Like, that is actually a decent sitting dinette. Now, I'm not saying I want to sit there and watch Lord of the Rings Extended Edition, but um, it's not bad. Now, speaking of that, let's talk about the entertainment. Um, because, uh, first of all, you got that space heat and fireplace down below just pumping warm air into the room. Awesome for spring and fall camping. Secondly, this is a big TV and soundbar combo that more brands are going to. Um, I like that because I like that there's less wiring, there's less opportunities for misses, for shorts, for, for failures in the ceiling and whatnot. Um, and, but the thing is, it, uh, you look at it and say, yeah, but that's a neck wrecker entertainment center. And to that I say, you're right. You're right. It absolutely is. Now, it helps that these chairs over here, the recliners, can pivot because they're free floating. But... This, to me, this seems like such an easy fix for the Vibe Factory. And thankfully, it is also the kind of thing that we can do for you. They fixed mounted that TV. It does not pivot. It's only a direct, straight backwards facing screen. But, guys, if the only thing we need to do for you is change out the, the TV mount to be a swing arm TV to watch it from the sofa or the recliners, give us a call. That's the kind of stuff we can do. But I want you to know what you're getting into here. Now, the bathroom and the bedroom is really where you see that Stick and Tin Salem Wildwood similarity DNA kind of kick in. No, uh, well, the medicine cabinet, the Lipitor cabinet, as it were, is on the left and just a mirror on the wall. Good counter space in here, though. The plain plastic sink, I know it works fine, but it, it almost feels out of place nowadays in a laminated trailer. Is, is it just me? I don't know. It just kind of feels that way. Porcelain foot flush stool here that... Thankfully, it has some very nice room around it. I was very happy about that. And since this RV does have a taller ceiling, it also has a taller shower, which somebody like me who's a little taller than the average bear appreciates. And that is a 30 by 36 shower, by the way. All right. I need you guys to vote on something. So this is the bathroom behind me. This is facing forward. This is the bedroom. They went with a pivot door. I'm undecided. I, I don't know if I love it or hate it. <laughs> so I guess you let me know if you love it or hate it. And you know, something I, I, I don't, uh, I don't like doing this, but I'm going into super insano, deceptive looking ultra wide mode, just so you can kind of get a better feel feel of the bedroom layout all in one right here. I don't normally like doing this because I don't feel it accurately uh, represents things, but it does have some advantages of showing you kind of how things are laid out in relation to one another. Um, so we've got breeze windows across one another. Thankfully, the bedroom windows do both open for airflow. And one of the things you're seeing on this, uh, it does have the option for a second air conditioner, which on a one slide rear kitchen, I'm a little surprised to see. But then again, I am but a simple Midwestern boy, and I know that some of our friends uh, in hot camp country may really appreciate that. Now, notice how they did an open side stand over here, super CPAP friendly, and then a hanging closet over here. There's also a bonus hanging closet uh, to our left that we haven't seen, but notice how even back here there's household and USB outlets kind of hidden uh, up behind that thing. Um, this side, though, it has not, not like a dresser drawer, but just like a little personal pocket if you will but oh you know i don't like wasted space but i actually like that it doesn't go all the way back there because that can be kind of hard to get to now the bed 
I know a lot of people are about to go, eh, you had me until now, Josh. It's a Camp Queen. And once again, that Salem Wildwood Cousin DNA kind of shows itself with the underbed storage system. Got the little shoe garage down below. I would use that like dresser storage, uh, basically. And it's got these little, I don't know, I like the phrase personal pockets. Your little individual boot storage and boot boxes. I don't know. Not beat boxes. That's, that's something else entirely. Um, the charge controller's in a weird spot, but at least it's a 30 amp controller. Um, there's a lot of brands out there like, yeah, we got a solar package and it's like a 10 amp controller, which I guess is okay, but it's not expandable whatsoever. That 30 amp controller, you could probably double the solar that's on this thing right now. Now over here, this big closet's cool, but I like the fact that like, I see people in used RVs buy these like hanging storage kind of dresser racks all the time. I think it's cool that they did it right from the factory. Of course, you, you don't want it there and you want more hanging space for Uncle Gary's sundresses. Well, you could also take that thing right off of there. Now, the traveling function on this is pretty standard for what you find with a, a very traditional rear kitchen like this. It's why I think um, this is an awesome model for destination use, but for frequent travel stops and for heavy towing, I don't know that I really recommend a lot of rear kitchens. And, I, and I'll expand on that in just a minute. But um, to kind of just further explain the detail here, first of all, this is a little bit tight. But if you put the table down for transit, which you probably should anyway, you can do the loop knee walker and you can kind of carefully climb around that. And if you do, sure, you can get to the cabinet space. But you still can't get to the fridge or the pantry without opening the slide. Now, there is one kind of thing you can do about that here. And it has to do with the fact that this is a cable slide system, which means like a rack and pinion slide, you can deploy it partially and not screw it up. A Schwintec slide, by contrast, the ones that have the silver, silver kind of worm gears on the side, those you want totally open or closed. So like this, I've only got it halfway open, halfway closed. It's okay but you still don't want to occupy and use the slide. And if it's raining outside, you don't want to do this because while the slide's halfway in and out, it's not fully sealed the way that it's intended to be. So kind of keep that in mind. But why was I saying rear kitchens, I don't think are the best traveling floor plan. They're better at a destination. Okay, so this is less about this floor plan specifically and more just about why I think rear kitchens are, are some of the very best trailers for destination use. Um, but not necessarily the best for frequent long distance mobile use. A big rear kitchen like this, the smaller little like 24 foot styles, they don't really tend to suffer from this. What I'm getting at is think about where the massive bulk of storage is on this RV. All of your stuff, all your dishes, your, your cups, your bowls, all that stuff, all the way behind the axle. Now, this is a good, decently sized trailer. And the wide stance stability axles will help reduce what I'm about to tell you. But the fact is, it's still going to happen. Um, forget campers for a second. Think of those like videos where you see a uh, uh, like school bus security camera video. And some poor kid in the back seat gets absolutely blasted up against the, uh, the roof of one of those things when the, the school bus goes over some railroad tracks. I was nearly that kid once, man. Uh, it's a good thing I was younger when I went airborne off the back of those things because my back wouldn't handle it too well today. Well, that's what's happening every time you hit a bump with all of your storage in the back of one of these. So rear kitchens are amazing. When you get to your destination, all these windows, that big open space, the huge prep space, no rear living can match that. But the fact is, the rear living is probably going to keep your stuff in the cabinets more organized, better, during and after transit as compared to a rear kitchen. So just a little personal theory conversation for you. If that means this isn't the right floor plan for you, once again, uh, just give us a call or say, okay, well, what else you got that's in this kind of size range or weight range with similar features that's a rear living or a rear bath? I'll get you some options. So starting right up front here, what do you think of the color palette on this? Um, it's not like it's a huge departure from the, uh, what you know, like, like look at that imagine like everything tends to be white black and, and silver right now and it doesn't look bad but man that little color pop that little i don't know baby blue stripe whatever color robin's egg blue i don't know I, i'm a guy so i suck with the color crayons box stuff it's working for me i like the look of this i like just that little color accent popping some life into this thing mary popping some life into it <laughs> um 
So uh, on the outside here, we have uh, laminated aluminum framed lightweight walls, uh, laminated flooring. This does have a walkable roof. It does not have a ladder. I need to do a little bit of digging um, and uh, determine if that's something they offer as an option or if it's a shortage issue or if they just simply don't offer it. So hopefully later in the video when we get around the back side of the RV, I'll have some notes for you. Now over here, gigantic storage door over on this side. And that is not the same size storage door over there, but that's actually still like what most manufacturers give you as a big door over there. So it's not that that door is small, it's just that this door is freaking huge. And again, when I walk around the other side of the RV, you'll see what I mean. And like even under the bed, that all aluminum framework, sometimes, you know, the thing is that's not really saving the RV uh, a, a ton of weight. Overall, it is helping with the hitch weight of the RV. Uh, th th that's one of the nicer things there. So this, you know, the, the question then becomes, okay, hitch weight, like what are we towing this with? Um, is it half ton towable is a question. Maybe. I think if you put that question out there to actual owners and users, you're going to get a variety of answers. You're going to hear some people say, well, my EcoBoost handles it no problem. And then you're going to hear some people say, dude, there's no way I'd handle this with a half ton. I personally feel it is starting to really push most half tons, not so much due to the weight, but the size. Um, so there's there's a lot of layers to that discussion, and it really depends on the specific capacities of your truck. That's something we can assist you with. Now, because there's no ladder, I can't get you up to the roof. I'd like to show off the white AC shrouds that you can barely see, as well as just the little bit of that solar panel that's kind of peeking up uh, over the sidewall there. But at least with the magic of a, uh, a broomstick uh, taping my camera to it, you can kind of get an idea of what we're looking at. That is their 200-watt um, uh, solar package. It does not include an inverter. It does include a factory battery, which is nice. And look at the big size of this awning with the door in the middle of it. So you're not getting rained on in the face. That is an anti-slam door, which is kind of nice in case it's a windy day. One of the things that is benefiting the towability of this RV, though, is the wide stance stability axle system. And um, I would, again, I would love actual owners or transporters who have experience with this versus something else, chime in and tell everybody else how nicely this tows. Because of course I'm gonna say it tows nicely, but I'm saying it from experience, you know? Um, it definitely tows and handles better than when the wheels are closer together on an RV. And I would, I, again, I would like it if there was some sort of supportive evidence on that. Now, that right there is not a substitution for a load leveling anti-sway hitch. You still should absolutely have something like that on a vehicle this size. I'd do it even if I had a bigger three quarter ton truck. That is, those hitching systems, you might, um, you, you'll never regret having one, I don't think. I think you might regret not having one, if that makes any sense. And back here, the corner of that um, big, you know, peninsula kitchen, you couldn't really get to the storage underneath it. So they did something with it outside. And I'm curious, what do you think about the fact they gave it an induction cooktop instead of propane out here? Now, that means that you're going to need park power or a generator to operate it. And the little uh, basin sink that we're looking at does not have a drain into a holding tank. This is the dog dish style, as it were. But you do have both the, uh, the hose and the sprayer nozzle here to hook up to a cold water source. So you do have water available out here. I do think that does qualify as a true camp kitchen, albeit an incredibly small and compact one. But that induction cooktop, I've seen a couple manufacturers flirt with those over the years, and then they almost always end up going away from them. So what do you think about, oh, bottom right corner, separate cable and satellite hookup, so you don't have to like hop out and jump cables. That's nice. A uh, full outside utility shower, another nice feature. I'm be, I'll, you know what? I haven't been around the door side and I, I, man, I've seen so many RVs. I can't remember offhand if this has a black flush. I'll be shocked if it doesn't. Underbelly though is enclosed um, and forced air heated to give you some decent extended seasonality. Uh, the windows are not tinted and these giant windows do not open for airflow. These are panoramic viewing windows. That's where a little bit of that Salem Wildwood DNA kind of kicks in that I was telling you about. Um, it does make everything look and feel larger when you're looking out of those windows. And thankfully the slide side windows do open for airflow. Um, 
normally that's not too much of an issue on on a floor plan like this with that big door side window those are a potential missed opportunity for airflow but again at least the slide side breeze windows are going to be uh, allowing some air to move through there's that black tank flush i was guessing about um oh you know what i just had a thought we have a sewer hookup right there uh basically below the water heater and yes okay so what i wanted to check here i'm trying to do a better job of this i'm trying to fulfill viewer requests people want to say i wish you'd show the sewer hookups all right well let's check out the stinky slinky station so we've got the bathroom hookup in the front we've got the kitchen hookup back here and i got a feeling some people are not gonna like what i'm about to show you but i'm gonna show you anyway because i'm gonna shoot you straight that is buried under the middle of a slide out I, oh, I wish it was back here a little bit. There's gonna be some people who, if this is a deal breaker, I would really like it actually if you told me, and I'm okay with that, because we've got other things. Maybe leave me a message, say, okay, Josh, what else you got that doesn't bury a, a sewer hookup under the slide? And I'll dig through maybe a couple ideas and see what I can get for you. But at least you know, I ain't gonna gloss over stuff just because it ain't pretty. Now, were you looking at the chassis? Couple things. Did you notice it's not a traditional I-beam chassis? That is a Norco huck-bolted chassis. Um, you find those on like Winnebago's, a few other things. But did you also notice how it was completely corrosion-free? One of the, un the, the things I don't hear people talking about with that um, chassis style as much is that it goes through a different type of painting process that I'm not saying it's impossible, but it is really hard for those to have even surface corrosion and when you do it tends not to spread it tends to stay localized so depending on you know especially if you live near salt water oh my lord if you live anywhere near salt water and there's a lot of breeze you just you're you're every every piece of steel that you own is going to be surface corroded might still happen here it's gonna be a lot harder and it's gonna be a lot easier to try to keep up on in terms of like little waxing and maintenance and keeping that nasty uh weather off of that chassis too and i mean look at that tell me that's not just begging to be parked somewhere and had a have, have a deck put on the front of that big door site even if you don't put a deck on it this is just a good wind uh rv you want to just pull up and park somewhere take a look out the windows i got the word window uh in my head apparently just an awesome destination model you know what i mean so if you appreciate the info and the transparency talking about how it's no it's not 26 feet no you can't necessarily camp anywhere anytime you want it, it, there's there's some things there but maybe not all the way um talking about towing on a rear kitchen versus parking on a rear kitchen having those open discussions with you if you appreciate that make sure you hit our uh the like button on the video or, um subscribe if you haven't already because we will shoot you straight on this stuff you work really hard for a lot of money to buy one of these things. And I want you to get your second camper the first time. Because we, if, if the things that I've talked about scare you away from this one, we've got other stuff. Give us a call and know that we're going to shoot you straight. That's all I ask is just that opportunity when you're ready. And in the meantime, let me know what you think about it. And I can't wait to see you till next time. Or uh, uh, see you on the next. Yeah. Yeah. Till next time, everyone. Josh the RV Nerd signing off on behalf of Bish's RV. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and have a bishtastic day, everyone.